on today's Techno Babble, picking out a stage television. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to Tech No Babble. This is the show where every week I help you with video and graphic design for your church. My name's Paul Allen Clifford. Well, last week we started talking about stage televisions. Uh, they're kind of a trend right now in church tech. Uh, my pastor uses one, and I thought, you know, I'm sure there are other churches that are saying, you know, that seems like a good idea. Maybe we should do that. Or why would we want to do that? Last week was why you would want to do that. This week, let's talk about picking out the actual television itself. So the first thing I want you to consider is the size of the television. Now, Looking behind me, if you're watching the video, if you're listening to the audio, I'll describe it. I have three monitors. One is uh, from my 13-inch MacBook Pro, and then I have uh, two 15-inch monitors on either side. They're really too small to be stage televisions. Perhaps there are situations where you might want just a little something, but you really want to think something that's fairly substantial. Now, you're not going to want the largest screen ever created by humanity as a stage television. That's not what the purpose is. But having a, say, something between 42-inch and 60-inch diagonal display that the pastor can touch, interact with, point to, that's probably uh, where you want to concentrate as far as size goes. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's good for size, but there are plenty of other things that I need to consider. Uh, one that I would consider is matte or glossy um, screen. See, a glossy screen has the advantage that the blacks look richer, but it has the disadvantage that it reflects light. And depending on where your cameras are located and how you set that up, it could be that there's no good way to get a shot with a, a glossy television. Now, maybe there is, but before you decide, I think I would uh, put up a mirror in exactly the spot where you think the stage television is going to go, shoot it with the cameras, tweak it, and see, hey, is there a way... To get all the lights out of this. If you can see a light uh, in a mirror from the camera, you will see that light in a glossy television, especially when it's black. So that's um, something for you to consider. Now, matte displays, the, the colors aren't going to be quite the same, but you won't have that reflection problem. So consider which works best in your situation. Um, next, should you get a smart TV? Well, it might be difficult to find one that's not a smart TV, quite frankly. But if you can find one that isn't, you don't need the features. It could save you some money, and it could potentially prevent, hey, there's an update in this feature. Please download it. And blah. You know, you just don't need that. That's a potential problem that, that you can avoid. The next thing to consider is what connections you have on the stage television. Today, HDMI is the standard. I don't like it. HDMI is an intentionally broken standard. Don't like it at all, but it is the standard. If you could get SDI, that would be better. It's probably going to cost you a lot more to get a professional monitor with SDI than one without. But... If you're in a situation where your church is completely VGA, still, I used to recommend this, but, you know, it's 2017. It might be time to move on. But if you're in a situation where your uh, church does do everything with VGA cables, sure would be nice to have a VGA cable to the display so that you can hook it up with some of the equipment you already have. So, 
if that's your situation, make sure you have it. You might want to have it as a backup if you have a visiting speaker who comes in and only has the appropriate adapters for that, something like that. But just something to consider. All things being equal, if you've got a VGA input along with an HDMI, you'll be fine. Uh, if the rest of your decision between two models is equal, that probably ought to be a push-over-the-top kind of feature. Although, if you're watching this in 2020, maybe not. So, consider that. Next, what brand should you use? I think I would concentrate on reliable brands that you have experience with. I'm not going to list everyone here, but I I would be hesitant to buy a stage television that is no name Yatsu or no name a vision. You know, something you've never heard of, but it, the price seems really great. Might mean it doesn't work on Sunday, or it doesn't work on Saturday, or it doesn't work on Wednesday, you know, the days you really need it. So just consider that as an option. Now, if people in your church work for them, and you can get a replacement real fast, or if you have no other choice, you have no other choice, just consider, though, the possible limitations of going with a no-name brand. Next, I want you to consider how you're going to mount your stage television. And while these are very common, the Visa mount system, V-E-S-A, I believe, uh, or is it Versa? I believe it's Versa, now that I'm thinking about it. The mounting system where you have bolts on the back of the television, make sure they're there. They probably are. But I would hate to find out that they weren't after you already bought it. So make sure that that's one of the features. Make sure you can uh, remove the pedestal, uh, etc. So make sure it's something that is mountable in your situation. And finally, all things being equal, there are a few extra features that you might find. Now, a lot of these are more for professional, so it could be that you will not find serial control, for example. But if it's there, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, right? That That's one of the maxims I go by. Um, professional color correction. Sometimes getting the color on the stage television to match what shows up on the projector is a really difficult thing to do, so professional color correction might help you in that case. So if you find that you have it, or if it's not too much more, by all means, go ahead. IP control, a wired control system, if you get them, I think you'll be happy that you have it, but... You know, it's another additional feature that you may or may not uh, be able to get. But if you do, just keep an eye out for opportunities where it might just save your keister. It happens from time to time. So those are some of the features I would look for in a stage television. What about you? Have you bought one? Uh, are you thinking about one? Are you finding a feature that I haven't listed or... Are you concerned about something else that you're running into? Just uh, leave your question in the comments below, or uh, we can talk about it. If you like this content, I'm sure you'd like my email newsletter, which uh, sends out pretty much every week with tips, tricks, discounts on some of the courses and services that I offer, etc. So go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe and there you can subscribe and I'll even give you a free gift or two. Okay, a few free gifts. There are a few at the beginning of the emails that I send you. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.